Over the next seven days, we will be canal hopping for invasives, wading roadside flats, and sneaking through backyard ponds, all in hopes to get one step closer to Florida's urban fishing scene. Sit back wieners and join us as we set out to cast concrete. Winners, we've made it. Welcome to Alligator Alley. We uh, had a pretty interesting night last night and an even interesting morning. We traveled uh, about an hour and a half to go link up with some good friends, Tristan and Brandon. Participated in their podcast, we actually filmed two podcasts. Pulled an all-nighter, because we were having so much fun. Got a little rowdy and uh, didn't get any sleep. Basically went all through the night, into the morning. Tristan and I did a bit of fishing. Brandon went to bed. Uh, fishing went a little something like this. I can keep heading you up. Oh, no. We're good, we're good, we're good. I got dumped off a paddleboard, lost my rod, almost lost the GoPro, it was absolute mayhem, didn't even catch a single fish. I uh, took about a four hour nap, woke up, and now we are here at probably one of the most notorious urban Florida fisheries, and that is the I-75 route, which kind of spans the width of Florida. And what lies just next to this very busy highway is water, water full of not only alligators, but fish fish of all walks too. I mean, you've got some fish in here that probably salt water. I mean, you've just got like bass, you've got invasive species. It is a melting pot of stuff that we could potentially catch today. We've only got a few hours, unfortunately, to make things happen as we make our way to Miami, which we'll be fishing tomorrow. But I figured this would be an awesome opportunity to kind of showcase like what is truly casting concrete. I mean, we have a bridge right here, cars are from past, but down below are hopefully some hungry fish. So there's a reason why they call it Alligator Alley, and it's because We've got big boys like that floating around the water's edge. Uh, so we're gonna watch our step, try not to mess up, and see if we can go crank some fish. Day number three here in Florida, do it right. All righty, let's get to fishing. So we are one rod down, only have uh, three twigs for the rest of the trip. But I think here, what we'll do is we'll uh, do a bit of finesse fishing, see if we can't go crack, crank on a I don't know. I honestly don't even know. I mean, there's obviously bass in here. I'm seeing bait flicker, guessing those are shad. I did see a tilapia earlier. That's the cool thing about fishing these canals. You just don't really know what you're gonna catch. It's like a box of chocolates. Yep, okay, back it up, back it up, back it up, <laughs> back it up. <laughs> I almost stepped on him. That's why I was going slow. I'm like, I bet you anything I'll see a snake. No, that's, I think that's a, I think that's one you don't want to get bit by. I'm not a, huge herpetologist here but pretty sure we just spot a little venomous snake i don't know it could have been completely harmless but i don't want to find out um also too not sure if this is a great idea to be walking around the uh i-75 marsh i mean i've actually come in contact with two things today that could probably you know ruin my day if not my entire life gators and then a snake but i don't know it may not have been a venomous anyway we're gonna wrap it up get back on i-75 keep trucking down uh, alligator alley and just pray that we can at least get one fish salvage the day just get warmed up for tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna be an epic sash. But first things first, let's get bit. All right, here we are. Third roadside spot. We've got like maybe a couple minutes of daylight left, but let's make the most of it. What I'm doing right now is kind of weird, but it makes sense. I'm taking a 3.3 inch sausage swimmer and I'm trimming it all the way down to the point where it's probably about two inches and I'm cutting the bottom off so it's a little bit more slender. It looks like a, a little minnow that's just kind of scurrying around. Seems like most of the bait that's in here is, is tiny, like really tiny stuff. And I imagine something colorful, kind of like this color I'm throwing, like this electric shad, is gonna draw their attention mainly because a lot of the fish in here are colored up. It looks kind of st stupid, honestly, but I'm just twitching it around, moving it pretty erratically, just trying to grab the fish's attention. Is a large one? He sees it. There we go. <laughs> Got ourselves a little busy. Damn, I wonder if we're gonna catch a fish over two pounds this trip, or at least a bass over two pounds. So cool, dude. To think that this guy has got to compete with a little bit of everything. I don't know how they survive, but they do. Bass are resilient, little crazy little dudes. Freaking stud. 
Thanks, man. I appreciate all the love. Nice little fish to end our road trip to Miami. Gonna send Jimmy back and uh, keep trucking. That was fun. Little roadside canal mission, success. Oh my God, nice peacock right there. Nice peacock. Come on, find that thing. Find that. Oh, he's all over it. He's all over it. Peacock, nice peacock. Oh. Good fish. He's falling all the way in. God, I'm trying not to move too much because I don't want to spook him. Oh, there we got him. That's so sick. Nice little peacock. That was dirty, man. That was freaking dirty. Oh my gosh, that was awesome. Look how colored up this one is too. Wow. Freaking beautiful. Look at the colors on that fish. Oh my gosh. I mean, this is just stupid. You come to Florida and you catch a fish that is native to the Amazon. That's so weird. And not only are you doing it in Florida, but you're doing it on the side of the road. Like anyone can fish here. This is fully public. There's a huge parking lot and right next to it is the canal. And in the canal are these amazing freaking fish. Probably one of my top five favorite freshwater species. They're powerful, they're beautiful. They're so much fun. They jump, they go crazy. You can catch them on lures and live bait. Wow. Unreal. Thank you, dude. One last look before we send her back. Thank you. Back she goes. Put her there. We salvaged the day. It wasn't looking good. No sleep. Too much rowdiness with the boys. But we made it freaking happen. And this is just like the very small tip of the iceberg of what we're truly about to experience. There's a nice peacock right there. I didn't even see him. Oh, he's looking at it. Oh, he just gummed it. There we go. Oh, that was so dirty. That was so, oh, he just came off, no. That was a good one, holy hell. I literally just stopped it and he just crushed it. Dude, that was insane. Oh, I had a nice one. Oh my gosh, that was insane. Solid fish right there. So oh, we're hooked up, another peacock. That was dirty, that was dirty. My freaking, the banger was tangled and it was just helicoptering on the surface. Another insane fish. Look at the freaking patterns on these guys. Unbelievable. Wow, we are making it. We're having a freaking day. Last minute buzzer beater sesh. Came down the water's edge to release this guy. It is honestly incredible to think that this fish came from the Amazon, the Amazon River, and somehow ended up on a busy highway canal, and they thrive. They love it in Florida. Freaking awesome. Let's send them back. Thank you, Baba, for playing. There he goes. <laughs> so much fun, dude. There we go. Nice one. Nice one. He's probably going to come off. He's not hooked very well. Dude, this is unbelievable. That's probably the, the bigger one of the day. Not a bad fish. I'm not going to get too close to the edge because we have some gators checking us out. Oh, my freak. Wow, that's a nice one. That's a nice one. That's a quality PP right there. This is so much fun, dude. I did not expect this. I thought we'd catch a couple largemouth, but I didn't think we'd see a single peacock. Buddy wants uh, to see what's going on over here. Unfortunately, this is my PP, buddy. Wow, that's a chunky one. That's probably about two pounds. Whoo, look at the size of that one. That's a little bit better. Every fish looks different. Like the colors in this thing are wicked. Blue top and a red bottom tail. Legendary, man. This has been such a memorable afternoon. All right, I'm gonna send it back. See you, dude. Back she goes. <gasps> that was a good, it was like two pounds, something like that. He stuck me really good too. Wow, I'm getting swollen. Oof, that hurts. Funny enough, what we're doing right now is I'm just kind of going down the bank and I'm tossing this little tiny micro banger. This is a small, this is the tiny version of our super popular square bell crankbait. And it's the perfect size for these peacocks. You know, it's like not too much, it's pretty subtle, but it throws enough action to uh, get their attention. Really good hooks too, they stay pinned. We've only lost one today. It was because I set the hook a little too hard, but the rod we're using is a two-piece finesse Guggen Green. This is uh, what we flew with. Pretty awesome little stick for this kind of fishing. I think this is this would be like honestly perfect if you wanted to come down here and bass fish and peacock fish. I'll leave all this link down below too, including the micro banger, the line, the rod, all this, but uh, yeah, that's freaking sick, man. Let's keep going. Oh, and we have a buddy over here. Mr. Alligator saying, what's up? What's up, buddy? How you doing? I think he was hoping I was gonna chuck the peacock to him. 
easy meal, but he's lazy. We did it. We got the roadside peacock. That was one that I wanted to tick off our list here in Florida so badly. You guys can probably barely hear me. This is just wild. I, for a second there, kind of got lost and forgot we were even filming. I was having just true, genuine fun, just like a kid again. And to think that this is just kind of like the warm up, like the appetizer to the appetizer, like it's gonna get, hopefully, fingers crossed, a little bit better. So what's next is we're gonna go farther into the city of Miami, like the true concrete jungle, meet up with a friend of Caleb and I's and uh, do a bit of fishing with him. But first, let's get some rest, let's get settled, we'll head to the hotel. Look at that polka, oh my God. That's sick. We've made it, we're here in Miami. This place is wild, it is so alive. I've only been here a couple of times, but every time I have been here, it's been it's been fun. Uh, you know, whether we're fishing or just kind of bouncing around in the city, it's, it's always been a, a good time. A good place to visit, but not stay too long. Got a little taste of some peas, some roadside peas, which was absolutely clutch. That was beyond expectation. Even one was like enough, and we caught multiple. We're gonna get some sleep though. We've had quite a long past couple of days gonna link up with an angler an individual who i've always wanted to fish with person i've gone back and forth with many times over instagram social media but i'm pretty stoked to, to actually get a chance to fish with him oh there goes another airplane that's crazy anyway wieners i bid farewell to all of you guys hopefully you enjoyed today's little session let's get ready and ripping for tomorrow good night see you in the a.m We're in it. We're going deep into Miami this morning. Welcome back, it is day number four. This is probably the most excited I've been all trip. I don't ever really get a chance to fish this place too much. Last time I was in Miami, I think it was maybe like three years ago, something like that. And uh, it's an interesting city, to say the least. It's, it's one of a kind, it's super unique. You won't find any other city like this in Florida. And one of the main reasons of that is because it is right on the water. It's in a very interesting, unique part of Florida. On the outskirts, it's pretty much nothing. Like the drive we took this morning, or I guess the drive we took last night, rather, we just drove through like emptiness, vastness, wildlife. And then all of a sudden, you're in this urban landscape. It's a pretty cool place, so we're uh, actually headed right now to meet a friend, I guess, I've kind of corresponded with over the internet, but never met in person. His name is Eric Estrada. Very awesome dude. Not only a really good angler, but I believe he's a guide. He's a, an incredible artist, uh, and he's really good behind the camera, too. So I'm excited to link up with him. He's gonna kind of be our guide for today. Walk us through how to chase after these urban Miami fish. I think the idea is we're gonna stick on foot, chase after just about anything that swims, but most particularly try to catch that tarpon. Try to catch a tarpon from foot. There's been very few times I've actually had the opportunity to chase one. So I'm really stoked. This is gonna be super unique. We're meeting him at a little Cuban breakfast spot right now. Miami's got a very rich and heavy Cuban culture here due to a lot of the immigration and it shows. Anyway, let's go grab some coffee, meet up with Eric, figure out what the, uh, the general game plan is for today because I'm itching, I'm ready to catch. This is it, we're at the spot. This is a tropical restaurant. You said this is this used to be open 24 hours, right? Yeah, I realized it wasn't when I sent him the pin drop last night. I'm like, oh, that's weird, it says 7 a.m. Took no time for people to flood in here though. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty yeah. cool. By the way, this is, this is Eric. He's gonna be uh, basically our, our guide the most part not only for fishing but just kind of the city in general like when i go to like somewhere like miami i want to i want to eat what it's known for and in this case cuban cuisine we're getting coffee we're getting some cuban breakfast just gotta get fueled up for this uh for this journey well how many spots do you think we'll fish today uh, it all depends if the fishing's good not many not many we'll catch yeah. all the fish in a few spots but i was out two weeks ago with some guys um and it was not very good. <laughs> really? We'll just hit it on the foot. Complete foot mission today. Might even do some, I mean, fly, right? That's kind of the mission. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you could throw some conventional stuff too. I want to try fly, honestly. Try, but, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, whipped up a bunch of flies yesterday. Awesome. So. I'm stoked. Well, we're going to grab a, a bite here and go over today's game plan. Eric actually did a fully custom painting for me. It was a brook trout. I, I didn't have any of the measurements and like that. So instead of doing a mount, I'm like, how can I like commemorate this giant fish catch that I caught through the ice? You whipped it up, it was pretty quick. It was like, the turnout time was insane and it, that was the only one of that like design. That was full unique, right? Yeah, yeah, I, only brook trout I've ever done actually. Oh really? That's yeah. cool, well you crushed so. it. Anyways, not only getting a chance to fish super unique waters, but you know, getting to hang out with you, figure out you know what, what he's all about, how you've been growing up fishing these waters your whole life. When did you start fishing? Uh, I've been fishing since I was a kid. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. My parents would take me down to the Keys, 
wow. every summer my grandfather was a pastor in Key West so every summer we were there oh every gosh. weekend we were there fishing catching tarpon what catching a good place everything. to grow up to learn how to fish <laughs> the day I got a fly rod I jumped seven tarpon in a row the first fish I hooked on the fly was tarpon yeah and I learned essentially it's a lot easier to catch tarpon for me at least on a fly rod. Really? You're more connected to the fish with the hook set. It's a little rusty when it comes to fly, but we'll, we'll eventually get there. Take a look at where we're at right now and where we're fishing. This is so cool. This is exactly what I wanted to do. I think so many of you guys are probably watching this thinking, what, really? really? You're fishing a junkyard? Why would you go to a junkyard? The ocean is right there, beautiful crystal clear water in Biscayne Bay is right there full of fish. Why would you make it a point to come here? Because it's unique, it's fun, it's exciting, it's different. So far it's been a pretty slow morning, but we're not giving up. Eric's been, Eric's, we, we, we've been to how many spots now? Like four, I think? About four or five spots. But we've yeah. seen them. Seen yeah, probably well, two dozen. we saw a few fish. Yeah. I just had one heat right now and pulled the hook on it. Yes. So we're getting better. We're getting close, right? Getting it's close. like, it would be bad as if we kept going to these spots and we weren't seeing anything. We've, a lot of fish are rolling. The, the cool thing about tarpon is it's a very visual fish. They will let you know if they're in the area. Similar to sturgeon, gar, arapaima, they have this thing where they need to come up and grab air. I don't know how, for like what time interval it is. I know for gar it's every 15 minutes. Well, but, the tarpon is just lack of oxygen. So like- in So this, whenever it's low. Yeah, in this scenario, there's barely any oxygen in the water, especially now it's sunny and there's no waves. So they're gonna come up higher and they're gonna have to come up right there. You see the water quality here, it's trash. Yeah, But not a whole lot of DO in there. Tarpon are the only fish that could survive this because they breathe air through their bladder. Isn't that wild? It's insane. That's, that's their survival mechanism is the fact that uh, they don't completely rely on the dissolved oxygen in the water, but they can just kinda you know, go up top, grab some, and then go back down. But that's, that's great for an angler because we can see that fish. We know it's there. Even though they're not biting, it gives us optimism, and then we can continue to find those fish that are willing to eat. Tarpon just ate top water. Did you right see there. that right? Was that over there? Oh, well, that was a roller right that here. That was a roll. There was a top water heat right here. Mm -hmm. Exactly, let's, uh, let's continue. There's another something right there too. Uh, they're really active over here for sure. Fish. Other fish just came up. I don't know if it's the same one or different, but it's in the same spot. Oh my god, come on. Find that fly, Jimmy. I'm right in front of fish. They keep rolling in front of me, but I just can't get them to look at my fly. So weird. But right there, too. It's not like there's no fish here. Like, there's definitely fish here. Just need to catch one slipping. Right there. Two big rolls. Oh, another one. Oh, that's a, that was a little guy. That was so sick. They're freaking everywhere over here, honestly. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, 100%. Oh! Oh, 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 come on, come on, come on. Come on, buddy. Right at my feet, right at my feet. Just had my first, like, interaction with one. Oh my God, dude, that was, that was an eat right there. They're literally every, look at them, they're going crazy. Saw him blow up on the surface, dropped the fly two feet ahead of him, and inhaled it immediately. Here. There's a little guy right here. It's crazy to think that these fish grow up to be, you know, two, three hundred pounds in certain parts of the world, but eventually, once he gets to like 40, 50 pounds, they start to try to move out of here and go back into the bay. You know, not the most uh, cinematic release, but he swam off strong. Spot number four, success. Eric uh, cracked a little, what, like maybe eight pounder? Five pounder? No, I was tiny. That tiny. Was probably like two or three pounds. Oh, long. really? I, yeah. it, little, little two, little three. But that's just how big I think these fish are. I'm calling an eight to two. But that was nice. Caught it just right over there. First fish of the day. We're, moved, we're in that forward progression right now. Anyway, we're about to change spots before we do that. I wanted to show you guys just the quality of the water we're fishing. Take a guess at what that is. That is engine oil from the runoff from the junkyard that is in the water that is also ending up on my hands because it's getting on the line and I'm stripping the line in. That is disgusting. It's pretty sad, honestly. Yeah, it's freaking gross. But I mean, the yeah. fish are still in there. Yeah, if you look at the fly lines, you know what I'm saying? Like, Black. This is, and the rod is, is dirty. I've honestly never seen anything like that. It's that there's that much oil in the water that it gets on your hands while you're stripping in your line. Anyway, just a testament. You gotta keep these waters clean, do your part. Anything you can, you know, you can do. Obviously in this scenario, it's it's pretty that they, you know, have a junkyard right next to a thriving 
little canal like this, but it is what it is. Um, you know, put the fish back, let them live, pick up some trash, do your thing. But anyway, spot number, I guess spot number five now, heading that way. I bet if you lit a match on a, on a spot in here, it'd probably uh, catch a little bit. Honestly, I, I think it would. Mammy's full of a lot of surprises. Anyway, we just grabbed some good grub. Shout out to uh, Eric for, for buying lunch. That was really good. Got some tacos, got some carne asada bowls. It was so good, so freaking good. Um, also too, where we're at is just kind of low key. We don't want to be walking around with a big expensive camera. So we're just going to film with the chesty and then also the phone. Just don't want to take that risk, right? It can be a little bit sketchy at times. There we go. That was sick. <laughs> Little tarp and we'll take. That's my first ever on the fly, dude. Oh, really? Yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> we got it done. They look honestly way cool when they're little. Like, they look yeah. crazy. Well, they're a miniature version. The thing is, they grow into their eyeball. You know what I mean, they have Yeah, I just noticed that his eyeballs are huge. So, that's normal for their eyes to be that big? Yeah, when they're little, their eyes are big and they grow around the eye. Wow. That's so sick. This is my first ever tarpon on the fly. Look at their eyeballs, man. Eric was just explaining that uh, they grow into their eyes, so their eyes stay about similar size, and then as they get bigger, it looks a little more normal. It's crazy to think these guys get up to 200 pounds. Like, that's wild. There we go. Thank you, man. That's dope. <laughs> just a little, little tiny baby, but you gotta start somewhere. Unbelievable. See you later, buddy. It's, it's just a little baby, but just fun to come tight like we worked hard for these fish they're not easy to catch right that's the, that's the general like agreement that tarpon are difficult and then when you do it like this and you put a fly in hand especially like an unexperienced fly guy like me it uh, becomes even more of a challenge we got it done that's so sick wieners the tarpon are beating me down right now this is spot number seven i think we've caught spot one 49. spot number 49 sorry my apologies eric corrected me this, is a, this has been a very eye-opening experience. I just, I guess I'm amazed as to where these fish live. I mean, I've learned today that tarpon can, don't get me wrong, can pretty much live anywhere. Pretty much, yeah. Like, we've, we were fishing ponds today that I don't even think I would even glance at twice for like a large mouth, let alone something as prestigious as a tarpoon. But they're in there. I mean, the cool thing is, is they, you know, you go to the pond, you can see them, they're rolling, but they're just not rolling on my bait, so. Uh, we're gonna try this spot looks pretty pretty saucy but fingers crossed if not we're not getting skunked there we both got a fish that's all that matters there goes a mullet or something right there Hey man, thank you so much. It was an absolute pleasure. Let's do it again. Come down, sure. come down to Texas, take some stripers on the fly. I've never stripers in Texas. Is that what you said? Oh yeah, they they stripers in Texas. They reproduce too. It's a what? little bit of salinity in the water. Yeah, big ones. Huh. Yeah, I don't, I've big. never done it on the fly, but seeing as that's kind of your thing, yeah, yeah, that'd yeah. be cool. This was, yeah, I wish we could, would have had a little bit better. <laughs> don't, yeah, no. I'll <laughs> come. We would have stuck some of those bigger so, fish that swipe. And my dad always said whenever he had like a really fishing day, and I'd be like scheming and like fuming in the car he's like hey listen it's experience you just we fish the experience it's all about like who you're with what you're doing and where you're going and like i hold true to that oh sweet miami i'm gonna miss this place as crazy and as busy as this city is it's pretty incredible the fishing here is nuts yesterday we uh did a lot of canal hopping and soul searching for some big brackish water tarpon and uh it was a very exciting experience we linked up with a good friend eric estrada who's not only an incredible angler he's an artist he's a videographer he's a family man you guys have to check out some of his art i'll leave a link down below i've purchased some of his art uh, one of my like original trout paintings i have is hung up in my office and it is seriously the most incredible piece ever with that being said 
it's time to move on to the next city. We are headed to Isla Mirada, which is in the Keys. We really didn't know if we wanted to include the Keys with this Casting Concrete series because the Keys can be kind of natural, but there's some there's some urban spots that we can definitely dabble in. But before we do that, we gotta get some salt water here. In order to get fully prepared, before we move on to the next chapter of this journey, we're gonna stop off at a tackle store called JD Outdoors, who was recommended to me by Eric Estrada. The guy who runs the shop's actually name is Jesus Estrada, but they're not related. I absolutely love these little urban fishing tackle stops. I grew up in the suburb of Chicago, so this is, you know, places like this is where I did a lot of my shopping. This is gonna be so sick. They apparently have some Guggen baits here too, and they sell skiffs. Little saltwater skiffs for fly fishing and chasing fish on the flats. That's so cool. All right, let's go check it out. Get some gear. I tell you what, this has probably been the roughest start to any morning we've had, and we pulled an all nighter on this trip. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the whole keys or just El Mirada, but it is impossible not only to find parking, but places to fish. Full transparency right now, we parked here, looks good. This was recommended to us, this little zone, this beach. And then this guy comes up to me, he's like, hey, just so you guys know before, yeah, have a good one, take care. And uh, this guy walks up to us. He's like, hey, just so you know, before you go fishing, you're not allowed to fish here. And I'm like, first of all, there's no signs. I'm like, why? I'm like so confused. He's like, well, read the sign. It says no fish on the beach. I'm gonna say, screw it. I'm gonna fish the beach. You know, I don't, I don't really get why you can't. You, we're gonna wade out there 100 yards. We're gonna be away from all the people. The thing is, is we're not even gonna technically be fishing the beach. We're gonna be like, oh, look at that right there. Perfect, this guy right here, look at this guy. So you can't fish the beach, but you can fish on the water on the beach. So we're just gonna go out there and wade and hopefully just try to, you know, not get busted. Cops are actually coming right now. So we'll see what, where this goes. Really? Well, well, tell me where to need to go. Okay, cool. I appreciate it, thank you. For the love of Christ, all I want to do is fish. I've been up for seven hours now, haven't even made a single cast. The turns have tabled. A cop, instead of kicking us out, gave us a spot to fish. We were gonna fish that beach, which we were told we couldn't fish, and the cop was like, yeah, you don't even want to be here because it sucks. And I uh, recommended this spot. Busy highway, multi-million dollar homes going up. This is true, casting concrete. Oh, cowfish. Look at this thing. Look at this thing, dude. Look at this. Is that a cowfish? Is that what that is? <laughs> Holy hell. That is the coolest looking thing ever. Oh, I don't think it's small enough for him. He's trying to eat it down there. <laughs> He's still there. He's looking for it. He ate the claws. I believe that was a cowfish, which is like, I think they're, they're kind of like triggers. I don't know if they're in the same family, but Hopefully we can catch one today so I can show you. If I don't, then we'll put a picture of a cowfish right here. There's no picture that we caught one. A little, little foreshadowing there. <laughs> uh, that was a cool little thing. We're on here, we're out here looking for everything, but I guess what that is. Uh, their mouths are like really little and I'm throwing a giant hooks. This might be my PB cowfish. PB cowfish. Bring it up and then put the, put the bait like right on the tip of the hook. Got him, got him, got him. Oh wow, they pull. Holy hell, they pull. I actually got him. Oh my God, dude. I did not think that that fish of all things would be a screamer. Look at that. <laughs> we finally got the elusive cowfish. This is the fish I've been after my entire life. Oh my gosh, just don't, just don't come off, baby. Stay pinned. You know, people come down here for bonefish and tarpon, but they forget about the elusive cow. These things are legendary. Also, I don't even know if they're called cowfish. I'm just making the assumption. Wow, incredible stuff. <laughs> this thing is actually messing me up right now. A cowfish, uh, hopefully I land this thing so I can show you, but a cowfish basically looks somewhat like a, a balloon, like a fat balloon with fins. It's, it's pretty incredible this thing has such agility. It's just scooting across the flat like no big deal. I don't know how I hooked it though because their mouths are so small. Dude, no way. <laughs> so cool, what the hell? It looks like it's from outer space. Oh, nasty. I think the reason why I caught this guy is because he was a little bit bigger. He's a little more substantial mouth. Now, I don't know if there's any protocol with holding these guys, but I'm just gonna assume he has a, uh, he's got something that would probably mess me up. Look at that. What a interesting fish. First ever cowfish. I honestly didn't even know these things were on the flats, but 
it's pretty much been the only thing we've been able to find. And while it's not what uh, Alamorada is known for, it's still a pretty cool catch. And you guys will have to, you know, fix me in the comments. If this isn't a cowfish, let me know. Could be a, I don't know, a sheepfish or maybe a horsefish. I, I have no idea what kind of barnyard fish this is. Check it out. The legendary, elusive, super ultra rare cowfish. Yeah, gladly. Buddy put up a hell of a fight there. Oh, dude, he just completely turned colors. Do you see that? Come here, buddy. Let's revive you. There he goes. He's good. What the heck? Did you guys see that? That fish changed colors in my hand. He was like a light periwinkle blue, and then he just turned to brown. I, I can't guarantee we'll catch anything else today, but what I can guarantee is that is probably the weirdest fish that we are gonna catch. If you guys aren't on that uh, cowfish scene, you need to be on it. It's a wave, man, it's a wave out here. Bump fish are tight and all, but these guys, they hump. Oh boy, well, I don't know if that was uh, really the best wading session I've ever had, but to be completely transparent, I didn't think we'd get anything. I've never fished it before. I don't even really know how to saltwater fish in the flats when it comes to wading, seeing as I'm a Midwestern dude. But we did get one really crazy looking alien fish. Like I said, I don't know what it was, but you guys will have to let me know. We're like smack dab in the middle of Ivan Murata, and uh, there's a lot to do here, you know, aside from fishing. I think we might go get some key lime pie because if you're on the keys, you gotta get some key lime pie. Got myself a key lime mimosa because I'm bougie like that, pinky out, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna go up to Jupiter then, well, I'll leave the last spot a surprise, but you guys know where we're going tomorrow. Anyway, mission kind of success. I don't really know how to feel about that, but we came tight and the drag was peeling, so that is all that matters. Anything you want to add, seeing as you're from Florida and, you know. It's whack. <laughs> this is tough. It is tough, man. It's usually not like this, I no. swear. Well, I think if we weren't uh, jets, I think we'd be able to probably get, you know, get something going here. Uh, we got a lot against us today. I don't want to necessarily focus on the bad, but like for the first seven hours, we just had to find a place to park. Like it was ridiculous. Anyway, let's keep trucking. Keep fishing, never stop, right? Cloud! 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 Oh 